We're in the demo lab with Lonnie, where he's going to produce a phosphorus oxide from pure oxygen and pure phosphorus. The pure oxygen will come from liquid oxygen, which he's pouring into this flask. That will drive out all the air and leave an atmosphere of pure oxygen inside the flask. He also has a piece of solid phosphorus attached to the end of a string that he can lower into the bottom of the flask. Now this flask contains oxygen and phosphorus exclusively, and they're going to react. The question is, will the phosphorus be used up first and have oxygen left behind? That is, will phosphorus limit the reaction? Or will the oxygen be used up first and there'll be phosphorus left behind where oxygen limits the reaction? Oxygen can be the limiting reagent because when it's used up, the reaction has to stop. Or, phosphorus could be the limiting reagent. When it's used up, the reaction has to stop. Lonnie's waiting for all the oxygen to evaporate, and when it does, he'll warm an iron rod and touch the phosphorus to initiate the reaction. Looks like he's ready to do that. Here's a warm iron rod that he'll touch to the solid phosphorus. When he initiates the reaction, you'll see a tremendous amount of energy released as the phosphorus oxide is formed, and the energy re is released in the form of bright light, tens of kilowatts of light, the equivalent of hundreds of 100 watt light bulbs. Lonnie can use the light actually to read from one of his ancient tomes. Now, Lonnie's told me that the ink in some of these ancient tomes is only visible under the light from the phosphorus oxide reaction. I don't know if I believe that, but I can see that he can clearly read from the light from the phosphorus oxide reaction, the reaction of phosphorus and oxygen to form phosphorus oxide.